I first started in jewelry more in like costume jewelry, glass jewelry, when I first came to Canada because, you know, I needed to find a way to make a little extra money. And then after a few years of doing that, I got tired of the glass stuff and, and, I, and I just put myself into the community center and, and at Britannia Community Center. They were having just like a community center kind of basic silversmithing, seven weeks, you know, every Saturday kind of thing and I just fell in love with it. I was 18 when I came to Canada. Yes, I was born female, according to the birth certificate and the medical charts. I had a, a pretty ordinary childhood, um, and was, and at the same time, my experience of life at home in the family was really quite disruptive. There was a lot of discontentment, a lot of, uh, I was not happy. There was a lot of, um, a little bit of disruption and just differences between me and my family. So my family was a fundamentalist Christian, and then here I was, this unique being that didn't seem to fit into any of their, what they wanted their child to be. So when I came to Vancouver, I got, I was free of all that family constraints, so I was able to experience and express and try things out a lot differently. My transition came about where I knew that I had lived life really fully in the identity of female and, and I was done. There, was, there had to be something more. You know, it was really, really simple. In some ways, I just went to my doctor. I said, okay, it's time to do it. And she freaked out and then I had to educate her and, you know, <laughs> and do all that, do all that work. And when it actually got very challenging was when now I was supposed to live as male. You know, I'd go through places of feeling isolated and not seen, not heard because I didn't have all this hair to pass. When people are so only interested in knowing what gender you are, you could be saying the most amazing things, but they're not present with you. And that's so, for me, so sad and lonely because you knew that person was not even listening to you. If the human brain loves to identify what gender people are, uh, the first thing people will do is, is that, like, is that a cross-dresser or is that a trans person? All that just started, you know, really eating at me and in 2009 I did attempt to commit suicide and I had the support of a couple friends and the suicide watch on hand. Um, I did make it through that night and when I woke up the next morning, spoke out loud, I said, okay Tian, here's the deal, right? I'm gonna make a whole new contract with yourself and you're gonna listen to this. I'm gonna stick around on earth because there's a lot of things that I wanna do on earth. There's so many things and at the end of it, I really wanna find this peace and joy and all this wonderful stuff. I do a lot of things in my life. I'm not a master of one thing, I'm a master of tons of things. I'm also a performer and I have a couple characters that I like to play and my most favorite character right now is Greta Xiao. Oh no, 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 it's too sexy. Okay, what about this one? That's too boring. Okay, and ooh. That's but that's, ew, ew. it's too polyester. Yeah, it's like my mother no. Being seen and being heard and being acknowledged is really a part of belonging. Human nature wants to always be seen and be heard and I find that that is such a crucial, as, as, as basic as we need food or, or we need to feel safe. And what I love about Greta is that she is silly. This funny looking lady, she wears the goofiest clothes and she just loves all these, all this thing. Her makeup is, is whatever her makeup is. And, and uh, she just goes around, makes friends with people, and is completely comfortable with herself. You know, this person is just so happy. And then the moment Greta talks or does something silly, you start to laugh. And the moment you laugh, suddenly you're in that space of joy, which for me is like the highest spiritual space you can be in, is to be in joy. And when you're in joy, it doesn't matter anymore what this person is. It doesn't matter that you can't figure out anything about this person, but you're now happy. It makes total sense that human beings strive to always belong wherever they are. Uh, one of the lessons though I do, I have learned 
is that regardless of that, I acknowledge there's always a need to belong, that for me, the most important thing that I needed to look after first was to not try so hard to belong, but to actually start feeling at home first with who I am. It's a fabulous lesson, you know, I think it's a great lesson, a great reminder of who we can really be. You can embrace, you can embrace your inner geek, you can embrace your your inner, your inner ugly person, or your inner bad dresser, or your, even your inner silliness and, and ignorance, or any of that, and just be a happy person, just because you're at peace with who you are. Honestly, this whole journey has been so brilliant, because at the end of it, the world will do what it does. And then I got to learn how to be more compassionate and be more accepting, not just of others, but at the end of it, myself.